Hey guys, in today's video, I want to talk to you about my experience being a single female landlord. And the reason why we're um, in the mood to talk about this now is because I'm actually on my way to my rental property to do some to see about getting some work done or whatever so let's take it from the beginning we got time um so the, the reason how i um got into being a landlord renting out a property is not by active choice meaning that it wasn't my dream to say oh i want to collect a bunch of properties and rent them out the reason why was basically because of circumstance. The circumstances were that I already lived in a house in Maryland and I was commuting up to four hours a day to work. It would take two hours for me to get to work and then two hours to get back home. And that was on a normal traffic day. Had If there was a car accident or something happening on the roads like rain, it would take even longer. So that was my average commute. And one day I was just like, it has to be an easier way. Like I was so tired of spending four hours, four hours a day in traffic, 20 hours a week in traffic, minimum. And so I just made the decision to move closer to work, to move to Virginia. And I did not plan for this decision. It was very like in the moment. So I didn't plan. I didn't have money saved up to do this. I didn't have, um, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any idea. I was willing to move to an apartment. I didn't even care. So with that being said, the process for buying the new home when I already owned a home was not only to show that I had a tenant and, and had a contract and had money coming into the bank for a rental property, but I also had to show that I had enough money saved up. They wanted me to have 30000 saved up in my savings account just in case, just as that insurance because renters aren't guaranteed, you know, and so I had to do that. Otherwise, it would have been like sell the house, but there wasn't going to be enough time to sell the house and buy the house. So I had to go with that plan of securing a renter and securing funding. And so with that being said, another thing had also happened in around 2000. What was that year? Was it 2008, 2007? Property values dropped a lot, like across the country. And so therefore, the 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 option or the yeah the option to just sell the property wasn't gonna work because I could sell the property but I was gonna sell it at a loss and end up having I don't know what you do when you have a loss I guess you get a loan and I guess you have to pay off the loan that didn't cover what you sold the property for I don't even know so for me the only real option I had was to rent the property out to find a tenant and to rent the property out for real and so that's what I did I always consider myself a lucky person when it comes to money most people who know me know that my family my friends they know I'm I'm lucky when it comes to money so it was very easy for me to find a tenant and matter of fact this was 10 years ago the tenant that I got that first tenant is still my tenant now so what do I think about this whole process okay let me tell you so I manage the property myself I don't have a property manager mainly because a I always felt like unless you live in a different country or a different state than where your property is to me and even then I probably still try to do it myself from a different state but to me property managers they're not worth it it's like they take this money and they really they don't do anything my they collect your rent who cares I can collect my own rent which I do my tenant mails me her rent every month nowadays with um, all of the electronic apps your tenant or whatever can basically just 
what is it? Send the money to your bank account directly from their bank account. So it is not hard at all. I don't need to pay somebody a hundred plus dollars a month just to collect my rent. Some people feel like they don't they want a middle person in between because they feel like if a renter knows you're the landlord, they're gonna try to get over you on you or appeal to your human sensibilities. No, be professional. As long as you keep a professional relationship with your tenants, that will not be the problem. I think that sometimes what happens is people just aren't professional. They try to get too buddy buddy and homie homie with people and then all of it just blurs the line. So I don't blur the line. Not with my tenant over in my other property and not with the tenants who, who rent out rooms from me. Um, we have professional cordial relationships. Um, when it comes to having to have things fixed, like that's what a property manager will help you with. Well, who cares? Because I always feel like they're going to inflate the price anyway. They're going to inflate it once for them, like their cut. And then they're going to inflate again for the person they're using to do the work because it's not their job to save you money. To me, in my mind, they actually do better by making the contractor who's going to do the work money because now that shores up their relationship but not even at their expense because that expense comes out of my pocket. So I just never trusted it. I never trust a system that I don't get to negotiate and barter with. Right? So some people feel like as a female you don't want to deal with contractors or repair people or people who have to come out and do the work because they're going to get over on you when they know you're a female. I don't think that's true. Once again, I believe in an energetic universe and I believe in shoring up my energy with God first and making sure that God has my back first and foremost so that I don't ever have to worry about man doing me one way or another. So that has never been my experience. I have always been able to negotiate. I have always been able to... Um, interview and and question repair people and I don't got I don't have to know anything about what they're fixing hell most people don't man woman or child so but I just always trusted the process that I'm gonna meet good people who are honest have integrity and if they have some passion about what they're doing that is just icing on top of the cake that's a cherry on top of the ice cream cone however that saying goes so, but I always just walked and believed in that so do I think it's worth it because I know a lot of people have these dreams like oh I'm gonna get rich by buying a property and renting it out or that's a, something to aspire to <laughs> to me I don't think that's true I don't think it's worth it um for two reasons when you go to buy a property, let's say if you found a really good deal and you bought a property at rock bottom prices, a lot of times that property is going to be in a certain neighborhood and certain neighborhoods are going to attract certain kinds of tenants. One. Two. It may be a rock bottom price because it needs a lot of work done. And once again, we're talking about my perspective as a single owner. And so I just find that sometimes, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, with my property, do I make a profit every month from renting it out? Yes, I do. The profit is not that much, guys. It's $250 a month in profit. And this rental income, I don't even include in my budget. I don't include that, nor do I include the profit in my budget. Simply because what I find is no matter how much the 250 stack up a month, eventually it ends up having to be spent on repairs. So realistically like I don't think I know anybody and maybe you guys do I don't know who really makes a huge profit from renting out a property um 
even if it was 500 a month I would do the same thing I leave it all in a separate bank account and I just let it sit there so that the property can take care of itself the property can pay its own mortgage and the property can pay for its own repairs but remember when you rent out a property you also take on that risk of not having a tenant like let's say like if my tenant wanted to move my property would end up having to be without a tenant until I can a fix up everything and make it rentable put it make it in good running condition again which may take a month yeah I would say at most a month so that's a month that I have to pay for the mortgage and um, you got to go through the process of finding the tenant again and until that happens you got to pay that mortgage and you can't write it off as a loss lack of rental income is not a business loss having a mortgage is not a business expense so you know none of that can be wrote off even though the profit that I make and the you know the rental income that I make I do have to um, declare on my taxes I have to pay taxes on that so to me it's a wash at the end of the day people say oh but it's a tax write-off because blah 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 blah. it's a tax write-off but you gotta pay taxes on your profit and guess what they see everything that you make from your all the rent that you make is a profit to them they don't care about oh it's a profit but I had to pay this much in mortgage that ain't their problem you can write off your property taxes you can write off your um your maintenance fees and things like that but you cannot write off your mortgage so it's a wash at the end of the day and then also you have to think about the fact that when you have tenants you're dealing with human beings human lives that's never perfect you know you it, it just comes with ups and downs it comes with you may have a tenant who every time you turn around several times a month they're calling you to fix something or because something's wrong or something's not up to their standards luckily I didn't have that issue my tenant is really good but I'm just saying these are the things that could happen or you can have a tenant who never calls you and by the time you go out there you realize oh my goodness there's all this stuff that should have been repaired early on now the damage is much more extensive than it would have been had the tenant contacted me um, honestly in the beginning that was the issue I had with my tenant because she didn't because she felt like she didn't want to bother me but I had to let her know no please bother me because you know an ounce of prevention is worth Look, I'm trying to give y'all quotes and I can't think of them. But an ounce of prevention is worth a lifetime of repairs. <laughs> However that quote go. Yeah, and then once again, we're dealing with human lives and not machines. I'm saying like versus a machine. Like a machine is more predictable. But when you're dealing with human beings, um, things pop up. Things happen. Like for instance, my tenant, like I told you before, my tenant had been my tenant for 10 years. But there was this one point where she ran into some hard luck. You know, n none of it her fault, trust me. I was there for the whole entire thing and none of it was her fault. And my heart went out to her and her family and I helped as much as I could. But for three months, she was not able to pay her rent. And she's a single mom, right? And you know what? And I ate that. I ate that cost. Um, for two reasons. One, because like I said before, I knew it was not her fault. It was out of her control. It was life doing what life does sometimes. The second reason is because my mom was a single mom with four girls. Um, my book, Collar at the Moon, is loosely based off of my real life story. And growing up for us was not easy. We got evicted a lot. Um, and, but I'll tell you what, one good landlord and I'm not saying that this is a landlord's responsibility because it's not. Because a lot of us who are out here being landlords, we're still living paycheck to paycheck ourselves. Um, even though like a lot of you may be familiar with my budget and you're like, oh, well, you make really good income. But the bottom line is this. I'm not independently wealthy. I have to have a job. So therefore, 
I can't take on the expenses of two households. That's not in my, um, I don't make enough money to do something like that. And a lot of landlords don't. So a lot of landlords, if the tenant doesn't pay the rent, the mortgage doesn't get paid, meaning that house is gonna go into foreclosure and everybody's gonna be out on the street, right? So it's not a landlord's job. I can't say that if we would've had landlords to just let us live somewhere rent free, life would've been better. But what I'm saying is, if there was ever a landlord in a position to extend a little grace, our lives could have been better. In, in some cases, in some circumstances. And so therefore, when this situation happened with my tenant, I chose to extend her grace because I knew that that was something that could have helped my mom tremendously when we were growing up, when she was a single struggling parent with four girls. So, yup. I ate the cost on that, but I never felt the dearth of it. I never felt the struggle of it because again, I'm so blessed and so abundant. And my tenant is a really good tenant. She never, ever, ever tries or has ever tried to get over or not live up to her end of the bargain. And for that, I am extremely grateful. And so yes, I'm on my way out there now to look at what repairs need to be done on the house. I try to do this once a year, like just kind of go and get an overall look. Cause once again, I feel like that whole ounce of prevention is worth however that quote ends. So I try to get out here and get out here with a handyman and just kind of go through the property, see what could be fixed, see what could be repaired, see what could be whatever. I just wanted to share that. Would I get into renting out properties or getting, collecting a bunch of properties and renting them out? I don't think so. I don't think it's worth the, um, the ups and downs. I don't think it's worth the ups and downs. All I'm saying is that it is not going to make you the buku extra income that you think it is because even when you're up, you have to put that money aside for when things need to be repaired or for if you ever go a period where you don't have a tenant. So that is all y'all. If y'all have any questions, leave them below. And if you would like, I would appreciate um, a vote, thumbs up, thumbs down or whatever. And if you wanna subscribe, come on, join the family and everything. I would love to have you as part of my posse and that's what we're doing. So until next time, y'all, peace.